All right, where Chevy Chase and I left off last Thursday night, the Saturday Night Live people picked up in this very studio. The new folks did a show over the weekend, and now we're back. Ready? Yeah, well, I'm I can give you maybe a half an hour this time. It's perfect. Okay. Didn't you, and I, I may have the time frame wrong, uh, at one point you had a run-in with Bill Murray and fists were flying? Yeah, the first time I came back. The first time I came to host the show, it's a complicated story, so I don't want to get into it too deeply, but we... Uh, we ended up. Airtime is very cheap now. So we ended up throwing it. punches in the uh, in the back dressing room. Uh, Billy tends to like that kind of thing. He certainly did back then. I think he's probably mellowed a bit, but um, I was probably coming off as a wise ass to him, a guy who was on top of it, who felt he. I probably looked too self-important to Billy. I'm trying to see it from his perspective. Yeah. I don't know exactly the. I know some of the issues, and uh, uh, Billy. It's confrontational, and he wants to see what metal you're made of, you know. And we really had a, an all-out thing just before I had to go out on the stage and, and open the show. But we got over it. We Anybody over connect? It. Or was it like a baseball I don't, I don't think there were any connects. Connection. Uh, what happened was John threw himself between us. Uh, as I remember it, John was actually standing in the door as Billy came toward me, and I was ready to throw a couple of punches, and my arms couldn't move because Brian Doyle Murray, his brother, held me by the arms at mm. the last second. And we're just sort of looking at each other angrily, and I was perfectly willing to go in and, tu and uh, tussle with him. And he was certainly willing to do it with me. But in the end, uh, he apologized, and I apologized, and it was over. So you apologized before you went on the air, or was this still kind Not of simmering much. while you were it on? It was uh, simmering a little. I mean, I think uh, it's, uh, it's a long time ago, and I don't want to get into it, but it was, it was simmering a little bit. I was, I was shaken up by it emotionally. You hurt yourself several times, didn't oh, you? Oh, sure. Badly? Not badly. I had one moment right here in this set uh, when I was doing a... Uh, I was doing one of the Ford Carter debates. I was Jerry Ford. I believe at the time I had a needle in my arm. I just had my flu shot. It was just sticking there. And uh, we had arranged it so that at the end, I would simply... F I had a podium in front of me. I would simply fall forward. Mm -hmm. And uh, the podium was not padded. They'd forgotten to pad it. I fought on the podium and caused some internal bleeding, basically. And uh, that was in dress rehearsal. I then did the show that night with pain. And then I ended up in the hospital for a week. I think Gilda Radner was quoted once as saying that she ran into Barbara Walters, whom she had uh, parodied as Baba Wawa, mm -hmm. and she felt badly upon meeting this flesh and blood yeah. person who seemed likable enough. Yeah, and, uh, Bob, Baba's likable enough. And uh, you've subsequently had some sort of acquaintance with Gerald Ford, right? Yeah, I ran into him. And, uh, Intentionally? He, he took me out like three feet <laughs> down. I, I'll tell you what, he's a, a very nice person. Uh, very graciously, when he didn't have to, has encouraged a relationship. Um, obviously, also, he, he's an entertainer himself. I mean, he goes on a speaking tour. Uh, he needs entertainers to help back him in certain endeavors. Uh, but uh, I think there's a genuine friendship there, too. Uh, and I did feel embarrassed, rightfully, uh, for some of the things that I'd done that have actually helped prevent him from being ele an elected president. Uh, but not too embarrassed. I mean, he took it in his stride. You know, that's, that's what you get when you're running for president. When, when you went into film work and they said, okay, this is going to be the uh, 70s and 80s new Cary Grant, yeah. did that strike you as preposterous right out of the box? Yeah. Sure did. The tune of 10 grand. <laughs> of 100 grand. What, what did he sue me for? He sued me for 10 million. million. Yeah. Settled right. for 100 yeah, yeah. grand. Settled for 100. <clears throat> of course it was preposterous. And it's the kind of thing, it's like the Johnny Carson thing. And people say, you're the next Johnny, you're the next Cary Grant. There just never will be. It's just so silly. And um, I was hearing it in every interview. And I can't tell you how many times I've heard it said of other people since then, yeah. and probably before then. So, of course, it's preposterous. Tom Snyder said something about it to you, and that's what you're referring when to. When I was told so I'd be the next Tom Snyder, that I could believe. Yeah. When he said it, uh, I made a joke. It was actually quite funny. Carrie didn't think it was funny. And uh, subsequently, in a deposition with Carrie over this thing, I tried to apologize through letters and everything else. 
I was there when the lawyer said to him, <coughs> my lawyer said, Mr. Grant, when you heard Mr. Chase make this remark, what were your feelings? Should we say what the remark was? Uh, go ahead. All right, I'm, I'm Tom Snyder. So, you're no, going to no, be... No, no, I said go ahead. You're going to be the next <laughs> Cary Grant. <laughs> no, sir, I'm not going to say it again. You can say what I said. You said Cary Grant uh, is a homo. No, I didn't. No, I said, I, I said uh, no, that's silly. Nobody could be the next Cary Grant. He was great, and I'm, I'm saying he's a homo. Just like that, that kind of... Mm -hmm. Later, I tried to pretend I'd said homeowner or something, you know. The, the joke to me was the word homo. Right. It was just, just, people don't use that word. I mean, if you really wanted to say that somebody was a homosexual, you would say gay. Right. When you or say if you wanted to say it in a way that was pejorative, you'd say fag. But you'd not say homo. That's a silly use of the word. The fact is, I was not aware of the, the fact that people had surmised that about him or guessed that about him and that he had gone through some, some hell over that. And uh, I just wasn't using my head. So I said that remark. Anyway, here's what happened at the de de deposition. My lawyer said, Mr. Grant, how'd you feel when Mr. Chase said, I felt I wanted to sue. <laughs> that was his, it was so funny. He it, apparently enjoyed suing. He was in and out of court. He was a, lot, a very huh? litigious guy, I understand, yeah. So he sues and for 10 million. He was very nice to me uh, when, once we settled. He was a very sweet. And he takes the 100 fellow. grand and then, then he takes the 100 guy. grand and laughs. But you know you're right. And obviously, it, it's too big a risk to run that you'd be misunderstood or hurt someone's feelings in the present climate. It wasn't just climate, his feelings, but it was also hurting the, the gay community. Exactly. You know, it was, it, was, it was stupid because for me it may be funny, and for my friends it's kind of inside funny, the, the joke being it's the word homo that's funny. That's what I was getting to. the to. gay community, that's not funny. It's like saying that's a bad thing to be, and, uh, and I wouldn't be it. Right, rightly so, but I think there's a, a large portion of the audience that understands that what you were really poking fun at was that mentality in the fifth grade at yeah. recess and if somebody makes would, the last out it. of an inning in a, in a softball game, hey, you homo, yeah. which really has almost nothing to do with sexuality. No, no, no it's like saying fairy. Yeah. It's just, yeah, or sissy. I mean, yeah. But you can't, there's no way to justify that kind of error. It was, it was, it was bad perspective on my part. You know, you can't really justify it. Nor would, if, if I had been Cary Grant, would I have sued? I would have dropped it. You know, particularly if he was worried about people hearing it certainly wouldn't have uh, then said, uh, as a settlement, you will pay this and you will go on the Carson show and publicly apologize. The point would be, don't bring it up again, really, you know. Uh, so that's over with, but it was a dumb thing to do. And I did apologize, and he got, he, he knows that. Stay tuned. Later, we'll be right back.